to that late stage if it ever does come to it once again in game number four. Could be the final game of the series. This is it. Crowd people, get ready. It's match point. RSGPH 3 0 against RRQ. Can they bring this back? Can RSG be crowned as the champions of C here at MSC 2022? Oh, there's one hard look there at the logos for the teams fighting it out here as we load up into the Land of Dawn. And man, I gotta say, both teams have very good drafts here. Again, it comes down to the execution factor, but here we go, right through the portal. Welcome to game number four. Here it is. Make it or break it for RRQ and especially for RSG. 3-0 match point. They're looking to just play it safe though. They don't want to really take a lot of these risks in the early game. They want to go for the neutral objectives, what their composition was made for. Mm -hmm. They've got to figure out where they want to attack though, right? Top side again with the Wander. Oh. They're looking for good timing coming in from Albert with the Thorn Rose. But again, if we're talking about where they want to play towards, I feel like RRQ Ho Hoshi generally wants to play a little bit more defensively, not so aggressively just yet. And we're expecting it around level four is when they start to make the first move. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of focus here in the top lane already forcing the flicker out from Skylar early on. This is the pressure, right, of having that coup front here. Um, Light is going to be able to continue to focus on Skylar's lane because, again, you don't want Beatrix to have that early game uh, kind of advantage, especially on a against a hero like Clint, where he needs a little bit more time here. He's a little more passive, but notice, too, this time this Clint is a different emblem from what we've seen previously. You can already see as well, Naps just pushing on that pace, trying to pressure Albert in his own jungle. Top side, though, Vin going to get caught out once again. RS3 draws first blood. That's what you want to see. Notice that RQ are playing very antsy, right? You can tell that Skylark, he used that flicker. Was it necessary for you? Oh. oh, there we go. Another pick falling into the hands of RSG. The momentum is on them, and one kill leads to another. This is the thing, right? Light will find those punishing moments. He already burned that flicker early on. He knows they can easily just make their way up to the top and now make a play. So this sets them really well up. I mean, you're already talking about two kills on Demon Kite and now first turtle for the take. RRQ still trying to take this right now as the Dawning Light will be able to chunk Light low. With the help of the Mystic Field, Albert will be able to secure the turtle. But it was traded for, I mean, uh, two kills right up top by RSG. So still, RSG, 800 gold lead. I mean, you might as well just give that up, right? Again, two kills on Demon Kite here. Tur First Turtle's not gonna really mean much, as long as he can continue to just farm up here. Could possibly even look for another play. You can see Light making his way up here to the top lane. But this time, RQ knows what's gonna happen here. They put members up here as well, and it shouldn't really result into much. Well, let's see how much it's going to result into, because R7 is in control of this lane for now. It will eventually outscale Nats, but Nats generally is going to be a threat for the lineup of RRQ Hoshi. His play especially, he's got to be very careful with the way he moves around. I think eventually they're going to have to take the initiative, right? And so far, it's been rather passive coming in from RRQ Hoshi, RCPH. They don't mind just waiting and scaling, right? Yeah, they don't. They really don't, right? When it comes to that mid-game pressure as well, RSG Philippines will have a lot of that with the Clint, with the Yeeb as well, and especially Nats. Nats on the Esmeralda has just been huge in the past few games. Albert will be able to pick up that gold buff. But again, RSG Philippines, they're sticking with that small lead. They're not really forcing too many fights here. They don't need to. RRQ oh. have to do it though. Finn goes in, but I'm offended. And the flicker combo. Albert unable to follow up on that play. And RRQ, they're the ones actually burning out a flicker for a lights flicker. Yeah, I mean, got to find resources where they can. And like you mentioned, Gideon, they need to be the ones kind of containing this momentum because when you have Albert on this Lancelot, you really don't want to be playing too defensively. Now, top lane going to be the focus here. Oh. Meanwhile, there you go. Skylar's got to take quite a bit of damage here, but he should be fine. Uh, he's going to need a little help to clear up this top side, right? Because again, they're remaining a lot longer. Aqua does get revealed as he's uh, trying to move into the next brush, but that's where you see the rest of RG members looking to punish. 
Oh, Light gets the Tyrant's Rage actually onto Vin there. Will not be able to connect onto more as RSG. They just go for the Turtle Tape. Albert still here in front of it all. Going in for the Puncture to get the better positioning here. RSG, look at Light. He's chaining it in. He's going for it. He oh. will not find anyone there, but Morning Simon will be able to connect. That's oh. going to be Light taking low, but the perfect timing to find Albert there. Clay gets the pick up onto Light. R7 now in the midst of it all, trying to look for more as he jumps in with the Consecration. Forced to flicker out of that one. RRQ, they trade the Turtle for a kill. Okay, good. I mean, Light goes down there, but now look at the focus here. Aqua could be, okay, forcing the flicker out once again. Vin there to back him up, but this is tough, right? This is a tough position for RQ to be in, and now Emon is still there. Aqua also staying around for a little longer. Yep, Nats is gonna chase down Albert for now, even committing his ultimate to force him out. So now they know for a fact no plays are gonna be made, right? And they wanna continue shoving out these waves as they have momentum from mid lane prior. They're gonna shove Vin and Skylar out. They didn't get to recall. No, no, they didn't. This is gonna be RSG just controlling that top side again. We kind of mentioned this a little bit. We hinted at this, right? Clint, map pressure early on, three minutes on, and they were able to capitalize on that to make Iman even stronger here. And this is gonna be R7 actually caught out. Light finds it, goes in, and we'll be able to combo him through. That's gonna be the final execution by Albert to look for something, but canceled away by the bouncing ball. He no longer has the puncture. He's gonna be rooted in the real world manipulation. That's the Thorn Rose pop, but it will not help him escape. Iman times the basic attack perfectly to find him. See, this is tough, right? Because Vin, you rely so much on Vin again to use that combination, the flicker, the I'm offended to really find those moments here because even Clay, like even if he, even if he has the early kill here, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have that really threatening damage just yet. And as we're seeing RC Philippines, they're a lot more proactive in finding the moments, especially having light on this Kufra. Now they're just kind of gathering together here to put more pressure on the bottom lane as they continue to get turrets. Yep, I mean, the objective gameplay so far by RSGP H is quite astounding, right? Because again, they're snowballing off of these objective leads and playing off lane priority more than actual engagement. And RQ Hoshi, unfortunately, this passive style of gameplay is not going to work out for them if this keeps dragging on. However, a lot of the initiative is solely based on whether they have their ultimate, do they have a battle spell, right? They're just letting go of so much here, not even contesting for Turtle. And what have they achieved? R7 knows for a fact, hey, they're not on Orange Buff. Well, they are trying to look for something else here. Once again, RRQ on the back foot. It's RSG Philippines with the initiate, uh, with the initiative play, with the proactive movements on the map. And this is where they find their comfort, right? Death Ball, that snowball. Try to talk a little bit about that here, Naisu. What is the Death Ball? Man, the Death Ball is pretty much when they have this lead at this point. We're talking about 4K already. Seven minutes in, they're just gonna gather up together and even put focus on R7. Look at all of them go. Oh, wow. He actually is able to dodge away from that one, but it does not matter. RSG, they put all the members up top. RRQ won't even be able to find a trade until right now. That's a little bit late here, and they will find a turret, but they might just risk losing uh, in an inner turret there in the top side. Even the mid lane turret here might be controlled by RSGPH. As Aqua, the zone's been away, and they're looking for it, man. Light is in the bush. He's channeling in that Tyrant's Revenge. Will not go for it. Vin, still able to clear out the waves, and RRQ, they don't get sandwiched in that base. It's just the inner turret up top. No, they don't, but now Iman's coming over and he's gonna get some good shock damage. They're gonna lose a tier two topside because of that. It's just time after time, RRQ are letting this game slip out of their hands. They must take the initiative and take the fight to RSG. It's not like they have a power spike, a significant power spike as of right now. It's 3.8k and they're at 21. Aqua now finally finding his Ice Queen's wand. Now he is a legitimate threat and RRQ should have decided to get take a fight against R uh, RSG before that was going happen. Yeah, but at this point, like you said, that death ball strategy, when they get this type of lead, it's not often that RC Philippines lets it slip out of their hands, and that's exactly what's happening here. So you can just park Naths in a lane that you want him to push in, cause pressure. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is going to go ahead and focus on the rest of the map. Plus, now that the Lord's coming up here at almost the nine minute mark, they should have free reign on that. Like you said, Aqua just got a big item pickup here, and having that real world manipulation around this area is going to be huge. It's going to be very difficult for RRQ to actually push, push their way through this one.
Well, Light looking for more here, and that's gonna be the Thorn Rose for the side of Albert. Now R7 looks for the flanks, goes in, oh. but gets so much damage put onto him. Donning Light now from play just to open up the map a little bit more, but RSG still in full control of this Lord. RRQ are just trying, scraping something here as Nats will go in for the Falling Time, but oh. onto Vin. Once again, they're all trapped in that square, and that's a free Lord for RSG. The micro macro setup is insane. See, like I said, all Aqua has to do is drop that real world manipulation, zones everybody out of RQ. Albert was trying to see if he could do something about it, but just unfortunately not really in favor here, especially when you look at the items. But now with that Lord, it is only normal. It's only a regular Lord here, but they're definitely going to convert some turrets for that. Yeah, they, the convergence is going to be really good. And RSG, I think at this stage of the game, are basically going to you know dictate how RRQ are going to move across the map. So far, RRQ have not found anything against RSG as of yet other than one turret and one turtle. RSG play off of so much momentum to the point where RQ are second guessing and doubting a lot of their moves. Here comes Light. Is he going to go for it? No. He holds off and they're going to group up the minions up top and bottom side to collapse and get and secure another turret. This is why the Kufr is just so scary, right? When you don't see him, you're still pressured because you don't know where it's going to come from. You're forced to just back off of your turret and you're forced to give away objectives here. The pick potential is insane and the thing is RQ don't really have an answer for now. Yeah, as of yet, you know, Light has that immortality and it's working really well for him because he can make those decisions if he wants to. He can play a little aggressive and that's what we're seeing him do here. And that's why it's oh, so difficult. Oh, Light, he will be able to find it. And RSG just go through the tunnel. They punish RRQ, Nash a little bit too deep, will be punished oh. here as he will fall, but only a one for one. RSG, they pick up so many more objectives though. They can convert onto this, they were able to the pressure RRQ out of their own base. What a play coming out from Blight, but they don't get as much as they want to win. Honestly, I do think it is a little bit of a waste. It was so good, but RSGPH were unable to collect the bounties and RRQ flicker out of the situation and only R7 has to take the brunt of it. And R7, he's expandable at this point, right? Yeah. He's not he's not exactly in a position of power like Nats where he can really start tanking the damage and he only gets better from then on out. And as you can see, Nats, his damage is through the roof. Clay is trying to catch up, but Again, Iman is making sure that whatever catches that are made by RSGPH, he will take out at least one target. This is the thing, RRQ really needs to buy time, right? Yep. After looking at the damage dealt, the, the chart here, especially for Clay and Skylar, right? Clay needs enough time. It's It's been proven here, if they can drag this out, maybe six more minutes, Clay will be to the point where actually he's starting to be pretty threatening. But Aqua's already way ahead of him, picking up key items here too. So that's big potential they have to worry about. That's why you see Vin picking up those magic resistance items, because he is the one that has to live long enough here. Because right now, like you said, R7, a little bit, uh, it's tough to make that pick work here on this Uranus, but Vin, again, will be that kind of frontline decision maker, aggressor to find moments for RQ to get back into this game. Skylar also picking up that Malefic Roar could be potential for them to contest, but at the pace RSG Philippines is going, it's looking a little grim. The yeah. comeback potential is getting slimmer and slimmer as RSG just, they squeeze. They are able to suffocate RRQ in their own base. Look at this, the way they're controlling the map, that bottom side, Gideon, always pushed in. Yeah, they just don't have a choice here. And even RRQ, they're just going to try and make sure, is the pixel, pixel brush clear? They're gonna start the aggro and see what happens, right? They're just playing off of that info. And every single time they do, RSG make, take the, the initiative, oh, go back into lane, reveal face. Make Make sure that they are constantly guessing. Keep RRQ questioning each and every move that they make, and eventually they will crumble down. If you look on over to the side of Yves so far, with this genius wand, this really helps out uh, for the rest of the team, especially for people like Nats, right? Get away a little bit, take away a little bit of that magic resist. Allow them to be weaker for Nats to run them down and find it. Light, he does try to initiate, but I think this Ooh. might fall. Oh, Nats! It's over. Albert has to recall. That's the Lord for free, Albert in the mid lane. That read from RSG oh. was again beautiful. They catch him off guard and they have no chance at that Lord anymore. No, they don't. They try to go for an off angle here, but Iman, he's he's ready and he's got backup to make sure that someone like Albert, of Albert's caliber, no matter how many iframes you have, he will get chunked out. And Iman, 
He's in the driver's seat. Yeah, he's coasting, man. And this is, again, why, you know, that Kufra was actually a solid choice when you think about it. Because Lancelot, really, the Albert hasn't been able to do much here, right? Because the threat from Light alone, it's not even the fact that he's using the Tyrant's Rage. It's just sometimes these Tyrants revenging and they get scared and they have to back off. Absolutely. There he is again, going for the Tyrant's Revenge in the bush. RRQ Hoshi back again in their own base with this Enhanced Lord. I feel like RGPH can end. Yeah, there, I mean, the Lord pushing in the bottom lane. They're looking for the setup here. In a while, RRQ has to be able to defend against this. They don't have the best clear here. Now they do have Skylar and Clay, but it's going to get pressured in here. Base now cracked open. Bennett's going to be used there to clear out the Lord. R7 in the midst of it all, trying to just bait out some time. But again, RSG, look at how they're playing this, right? They go for one turret with the Lord. They know they can't do more, and the discipline is just insane. Once again, they move back, they go for more, and they freeze the lanes once again. Uh, this is another thing that they do really well. The suffocation of their opponents. Yeah. Yep, I mean, once again, RSG, they're making the smarter decision. There's no point to try and press the advantage here. They know they're on the winning end of a lot of these fights. They're 6.7k ahead, and RQ Hoshi... Oh, oh, the pick! Light once again finds Finn! He will drop, but it's only his immortality as RSG once again get Finn down. They will have the Pryo to control the map again. RSG Philippines, Light especially in this game, have been phenomenal. Yeah, finds that pick, right? This is Ken Light just making plays and sometimes it's just the tyrant's revenge right so they find vin here meanwhile it's okay you can think that because the lord isn't up but they are going to continue to put pressure on these lanes to try to get another turret because that's exactly where they want to set themselves up for as the next lord comes up in less than a minute yep i mean honestly this sucks i mean our our sg is in full control rrq they keep trying to move out right but when you see these big plays come out from rsg side it takes Technically, RQ is punishing. All they get is just immortalities out of the flight. This could be it. This could be huge. Oh! Why? With the play to end the game, R7 is going to fall. And just like that, Clay, Skyler left to defend. 3 4 0 for RSD. They don't have the Lord now, but I'm pretty sure that they will have it now that it spawns in the 16 minute. Well, they might even not go for it here. I mean, it looks like they're not oh. Skylar. He's in trouble. And even the flicker no. came out of it. Nats finds him. And this could be it. The kingdom in ruins. A victor emerges from the debris.